August 25th, 1979. I am very confused, but I think it is best for me first to meditate. It will be of no use. As long as there are questions, it is better to bring them out. Suppression leads nowhere. Is there the need for the mind to become quiet? You are before the mind is. Don't pay attention to the thoughts. Pay attention to the consciousness. Thoughts will always flow because of the vital breath. Whatever thoughts are useful to you, you can make use of. Is it possible to attain a state where the mind is still? Yes, that state you experience in deep sleep also. Through meditation you will attain it. There is no process involved. With greatest interest you get absorbed in yourself. By giving attention only to your I consciousness, you can reach it without giving attention to the body, but to the sense I am. Is there a way as such? Each individual has his own path, doesn't he? Your urge is to know yourself. I tell you the direct way. Which is that? I just show you what you are prior to words. None of your experiences are eternal, so they cannot be the truth. Still, humanity glimpses the divinity. This humanity is the untruth. But you can't deny the humanity, can you? This human body is not the quality of the self. It is its reflection. In utter loneliness, the touch of I amness appeared. Just as in a small seed the entire tree is contained, the I amness contains the whole creation. Is Maharaj able to see our level of awareness? No, because I do not see you as an identity. But the level of awareness is a reality, not just a concept. Do you say that by your own experience? These are ideas only. How can you say that the incense stick makes progress? It is there, or it is not. There are the different distances until it is extinguished. Ultimately, when it is extinguished, is there any progress after? Gone is gone. Like the worms in the cow dung. The moment the cow dung dries, they are finished. However much progress they have made. But the Maharaj is not a worm. It is no different. This consciousness is a product of the food material. Whatever form the food material takes, man, monkey, or worm, doesn't matter. This consciousness is a product of the food material. What is the exact difference between Jiva, Brahma, and the Absolute? You remove all the names and understand. These are all concepts, a chaotic confusion of words, nothing else. Whatever I tell you, this knowledge is never ending. It has no beginning and therefore no end. All this is the product of the live elements. And the elements, including space, are substances. Space is like darkness, nothingness, like night. Out of it vital breath arose as a vibration. This body has appeared on me automatically, without my willing it, and therefore I became puzzled. What I have experienced is, I am not that matter. The quality of beingness, knowingness, which is a product of matter, gets extinguished and again goes into the atmosphere with increasing progression, and the cycle continues. That beingness has gone to that state of matter. But it will not stay in that matter. It will take care that it goes back to its state of absolute subtlety. August 27th, 1979 Truth is timeless and beyond description. Whoever lives in that and whatever he does, can the ego challenge the truth that exists forever? The truth cannot be challenged by anyone. Sometimes a great wave sweeps over me and I feel that I should make everything pure. But when I try to attend to it, I know that nothing can be done to change the fundamental truth. I see that consciousness comes into being, and that consciousness becomes the ether, as well as the food itself, and both perish into nothingness. So how is it going to be changed? What is happening here is, out of the foliage, the grass and the vegetation, the essence is eaten, and another consciousness appears through that. 
Consciousness is the essence of the food that has been digested. And along with the food, that consciousness will also disappear. During this limited span of life, many have studied scriptures, performed austerities, and meditated. Whatever came out of that is thought has filled thousands of books. But once the attention is on the substratum of consciousness, there is nothing left. The consciousness that has come out of the elements, through the body, is the quality of beingness, the knowledge that I am. That state of beingness will perish. I have realized that I am living even when many cosmoses have come into existence and have been dissolved. All this I see, I know, and I understand. Yet I know that I was always, ever, an abiding. Whatever has happened, I am here, ever present. I am very anxious about my life, not satisfied. You are immortal. You are not going to die, but give up the present meaning which you attach to life. You have only one thing to do. Care for others as much as you care for yourself. Behave as if they were all yours. That is all you can do. There is no necessity for following any particular path. Everything is the same. Think of that which is the center of the cosmos. Don't let your attention stray in any way from this knowledge of beingness. I am. Saints and sages have assumed many prior lives, but those lives were limited only for that particular period. All these beingnesses have appeared on ignorance and the whole consciousness is enjoying consciousness through ignorance, which has come out of ignorance. If you leave off the pride and the ego of that knowledge which you have got through ignorance, then everything is clear. You have some experiences and you try to benefit from them. But remember that whatever is going to be of use to you, ultimately, is going to harm you. Wherever there is use, there is also disuse in this world of duality. Whatever you like is going to create harm for you. Whatever you like most is in the end going to be most harmful for you, even when it is Paramatman. Whatever appears on you is knowledge, and you try to understand it, and you like it, is going to be a cause of very great sorrow for you. When you come to the state of Parabrahman, there are no desires, no likes or dislikes. This is Niskama Parabrahman. What is Niskama Parabrahman? Because the Niskama, desirelessness, Parabrahman is. This manifestation has appeared and is doing what it pleases. Manifestation is Sakama with desire, but the support of it is Niskama. If you want to reach that state, does it mean you also have to act like that? I don't care what happens, let it happen. If you want to discuss it through the medium of the mind, you are welcome to think of any meaning whatsoever. But whatever is done has limits. It is all limited activity. If you want this experience, you must insist on yourself, your Atma Prema, self-love. Don't leave it for a moment. You insist. Do not pray to gods or goddesses. Only see one. Keep on knowing that I am, and through that insistence, you will know the state that you want to reach. August 28, 1979 I have heard many of these talks about the food that has become me, but the point is not very clear. What does it mean? Every organic being, whether an insect or a human, depends on food. All these flowers, this foliage, is our antecedent state. We were in this state before, and gradually out of the essences of all the bodies that we have taken in order to enjoy this beingness, our human body has been evolved. The I amness is only the quality of that food body which you call I. It has nothing to do with any other thing. It is the pure and simple quality of this beingness. Is it possible for this being which has come out of the food to do something original, something totally different? Ramakrishna Paramahansa performed austerities and became himself Jagadanda, mother of the world. 
Others also have performed austerities, and they understood the truth. When they realized the truth, what could they do? So many great men have come, and what change, what different thing could they do? Whatever has happened, has happened when you were not knowing. The knowledge has come out of ignorance or complete absence of knowledge, and no different course can be given to what is going on from infinity. My mind, intellect, and understanding are being modified, and I was thinking that Maharaj is giving me something totally new. Is he or not? Whatever the changes or modifications going on in your mind or intellect, I am doing nothing that is different. I am only bringing before you newly what is infinitely ancient. There is nothing new. During the process of questions and answers, even if you get angry with me, I will have absolutely nothing to say to you. When a mother takes her child of three months on her lap, it kicks, it may slap her, it dirties her clothing. She merely takes the child in her arms and fondles it. And she even cleans herself only after cleaning the child. I look upon you exactly like that, even if your body is seventy-five years old. I see that point very clearly, and another simile comes to mind. That I am like an artist. Every time I paint something, Maharaj says, I see the connection, and in the process I get angry and maybe I throw paint on him. But he doesn't care, he is still smiling. When the vital breath and body combination are present, this beingness is there. The beingness does not die. Take the harmonium player. Because of the air in the harmonium, sound is created. When the player removes his hand, the air is gone, and therefore no sound is there. Is the sound dead? It just disappears. Tell me exactly what is the connection between this quality of beingness and me. The very essence of beingness is that knowledge I am. And still you say, what is the connection? The knowledge I am is itself the quality of this body or the essence of food. I will not teach whoever comes to me as if he were a mortal. I look upon him as immortal. There are lots of primary teachers in the world who can teach the alphabet. Even if I give him a slight injection or bite so as to find out who he is, the principle behind the knowledge I am will be sufficient for him. People say that we should act with detachment. What is detachment? If you want to know detachment, you must realize the personality or individuality is melting away. The personality is so much with me, how am I to melt it away? Find out the meaning of the self. Try to understand the meaning of the self by any means. Before this knowledge I am appeared on you, you were absolutely unattached. As soon as this knowledge dawned on you, you became attached to everything around you. Only that false I is attached. Everything is just happening, and that false I is taking the credit for doing things. You are the knower, not the doer. I will give you one piece of advice. Do not do anything that will hurt another. That is all. You may not do anything to oblige them or do good to them, but take care that you do not hurt anyone else. And that is also in this field of consciousness. Beyond that, there is nothing. If you become expansive with knowledge of the world and live for a thousand years to enjoy that knowledge, just remember that at the end of the thousand years, all that knowledge is going to be extinguished. Even if this atom continues for a thousand years, you must investigate as to when the point of the pen touched down to open this account. What opens the account? It is ignorance which opens it. Ganapati, consciousness, is the entity which has started this account of hundreds of births. All these accounts will not tell you about Ganapati. You must find out the source of the consciousness. The Maya is before the One. This account is made by one who has started counting with one. For counting, somebody must be there to count. So he must be in existence before there was any number. Mula Maya. Ganapati, investigate these. Ganapati is lord of the primordial sound. Sound and word are identical. One who understands the Ganapati is Brahman. 
Today's subject is both difficult and very easy. You can learn anything outside yourself, but it is rather difficult to catch yourself. Once you catch it, once you know your own beingness, you will never forget it. While you live, live fearlessly, because nobody has created you. Out of your own light you are living. Particularly, live with confidence in the self. King a bundle of your concepts, you are busy in the world. You are not that I which is going about in a determined fashion that I am so and so. You are behaving on the basis of that I, which was absent before the birth, and will be absent after the death of the body. The I limited by time, you have taken for granted. Go beyond the concepts and become idealist. September 1st, 1979 It seems to me that Maharaj is perpetuating the concepts by his way of giving us explanations. All this conceptual cycle is created by you because you have the concept I am, which you must eradicate yourself. Why create all the separation, separating whatever there is from someone who is supposed to be different from it? This creates more concepts. It is only saying that I am not this. When you are in deep sleep, is there any experience of pleasure and pain or birth and death? What does that mean? It means that the concept I am has vanished. I was wondering whether the relationship with Maharaj is breeding dependence, what we call laziness. This knowledge is full of life. How can anyone be lazy? You can call the body or mind lazy, but how are you connected with them? In what way do you feel dependence on Maharaj? It is as if I'm waiting for something to happen. Find out the identity of that one who is waiting for something to happen. Suppose there is a public well. That water, consciousness, is used by all. You have taken a portion of that water for your personal use. That consciousness which you have taken for yourself is the omniscient, the omnipotent, the omnipresent. And you must understand that. You cannot afford to be lazy. When you have come thousands of miles from your country and have listened to this great knowledge, are you going to die as an individual of a particular country, caste, and color? Understand that what is going around as your body and name is of the nature of the all-pervading consciousness. When you travel in a car, are you the car? I understand. You are the symbol of that consciousness. You need not understand it. It is conscious of itself. But you are limiting yourself to the body. That is all. If it is consciousness which is doing that, if consciousness itself is taking that limitation, there is nothing I can do about it. That consciousness through ignorance has taken upon itself that limitation. That ignorance has to be discarded. The fact that you tell me that does not make me discover it. I have to discover it myself. Otherwise, I can talk to sages for thousands of years without a single thing being changed. How do I discover it for myself? It happens. If it is your destiny, you will come here and listen to it, and the result will follow. Yesterday, two people came here with this lady and then went away. It was not in their destiny. People come here with a predetermined concept of what they want. You come here as if to a tailor with an order for a suit of particular measurements, color, and material. But I will not give you what you want. I will not give you knowledge according to your predetermined requirements. I will only tell you to see yourself as you are. Find out who you are. Thousands of people come here. They will utilize this knowledge as it suits them only. This is not the truth. It is the truth as seen through their own concepts, according to their own point of view. This knowledge, filtered through their own point of view, is not knowledge. It is only a point of view. I give all my energy trying to understand what Maharaj says. I have been working very hard. Today I am at the point to stop. Essentially, nothing has changed. I came with the idea that Maharaj is my guru. Guru means the one who removes darkness, but darkness 
is still present. Now I feel that all my work has taken me nowhere. I feel that I have to start anew from right now. How can I do it? A man who was sitting in dense darkness wanted to remove the darkness and started praying to God. Then someone came and said, What? Are you going to remove this darkness with your devotion? No, you have to bring the light. The light was brought and the darkness went away. Doing discipline is not necessary, but you must know that this is the truth. I am the truth. And that truth has no beard or mustache, however it is the truth, which you must realize. Truth has no form. If truth had a form, you would have gone and got it. Without effort, whatever is natural is that truth. Is it that the guru is only pointing the way? You have to hold on to it, and gradually, when it grows, the light will envelop everything. The evidence of the eternal is this transiency. The evidence of truth is this untruth. And the evidence of Brahman is Maya. We ask questions and try to understand with the mind how are we to go beyond this. You are not the mind nor the body. Who has this difficulty? Who has to go beyond? You were there before you asked the question. Before the appearance of the waking and sleep states you are. How can I realize this? As far as possible, remember what you have heard today. Believe in it. It may not suit your requirements, but it is as it is. You have only to see it as it is and be blissful with it. When you become that knowledge, there will be nothing that you need anymore. You will be infinite yourself. I do not quote scriptures or give you the judgment of others, but whatever is, I tell you. You will never get evidence of Brahman's existence anywhere except within you. What is evident, one is likely to overlook. What I am saying is very clear and simple. You do not understand because you want something complicated. What exactly does Maharaj want to tell me? You are the proof that there is God. If you are not there, there is no God. This I amness is the proof. You think that it is limited to the body, but it is universal. It is the source of manifestation. You are the knower of the body. When this past disposition stops, it is void, and that void is witnessed by someone who is not void. One who knows that there is darkness, can he be darkness? If you keep absolutely quiet, then the concepts will be strangled to death. I am doing nothing every day but telling you in different words each day, but always the same thing. It is for you to see. It is for you to understand. The flow is continually coming, but you are not hearing. In this very body, in this very birth, you must realize what I have told you. Leave all other concepts and hold on to this. When a sadaka, spiritual aspirant, has become a yani, it means that he has understood, finally and absolutely, what he is. September 3rd, 1979 When death approaches you, remember that you have no shape and no color. I am Nirguna, without attributes. This is the last thought that you should have. You know the body, but you are not the body. When you go to sleep, sleep with the remembrance of that truth. Many impure thoughts have come and gone away, but I am immutable. I am infinite. I am the truth. Sleep with these thoughts and all those impure thoughts are absolved. Don't go off to sleep as a slave to the mind. Be its master. Form this habit. Become absolutely detached and master of your mind. How do I eradicate fear? The fear named birth has to be eradicated. You come here with acquisitions of various kinds of education. I want to defeat that acquisition of yours and that food which you have taken. Before that food and that knowledge, what were you? I want you to think about this. What is consciousness? The activity of your beingness and the activity that you see of the whole world. This consciousness is without any color. 
But where there is a personality, it takes the color of that particular personality. When the beingness goes, that colorful personality merges into that colorless one, consciousness. There is no difference in the consciousness. It is all one, but we call it by different names. It is all knowledge, all consciousness. It has no measurements. When the taste of that beingness which you are feeling today merges into that universal consciousness, it does not have the consciousness of limited individuality. It has not come from anywhere, and it does not go anywhere. You are existence which is without any desire or objective. That great one where several manifested universes have come and gone. I have been reading and studying I am that. I still feel dissatisfied with my way of living. Have you tried to find out the reason? No, I guess that I love my personality too much. You still feel that you are the body-mind, and that is why you are feeling unhappy. That's right. You have been reading with the mind. Now, whenever you read the book, consider that you are the universal consciousness. And from that point of view, do your reading and studying. Read it from the point of view that you have no form or color, that you are the light. I cannot read any more if I think that I am not the body and mind. Don't be anxious as to whether you will be able to read or not. You just do what I have told you and gradually things will unfold. Some people are quite ready to take it. And some people have to be beaten and still they don't understand. But if you are ready, it will unfold. Some people are so tough that they are like the Indian dish popadam. It has to be beaten a lot, and even then the dough is so tough that it has to be rolled very forcefully, and then it is fried. Some people have to be taught in this laborious way, while others are quite ready and will accept immediately what they are told. Others just listen and concentrate on my words, and suddenly there is an explosion. You must meditate on that I am, without holding on to the body-mind. As you nursed at your mother's breast when you were a baby, so you nurse at this I am, the knowledge of your beingness. For four years I've been trying to remember to stay in the I am. Will you do what I have told you today? Read the book? Whatever you have heard, will you live like that, without the sense of being a body-mind? I am ashamed that I was very afraid to come here, because you never know what is going to happen. Maybe nothing, maybe many things. So I am a little nervous. Your fear will be completely destroyed. Not only will you not be nervous, but your fear itself will go. You must nurse at the knowledge I am. Remember and meditate on this also. I have no fear. I am beyond fear. I have fear for all the people. If I am walking through a city in Holland, for example, I am afraid for all the people. I am telling you that this fear will gradually lessen and will go completely, because I say so. The medicine for that fear is my word. What is bondage? Mine is the very foundation of your bondage and liberation. The Muslims have the concept that after death the soul is confined to a tomb until the dissolution of the world. Therefore they provide for that soul. In the Christian religion, also they say that man, once buried in the grave, will be awakened only on doomsday and judgment will be given. Does that really happen to those people? If they die, with that concept it must happen, because the mind creates everything. The mind creates bondage, and it also liberates. Today, suppose I am not able to think. My mind is not very clear. What does it mean? My food essence is rather dull today. It is not getting into combustion in proper order. Therefore, the thinking faculty is also dull. This mind faculty also pertains to the body essences. And I am not that. Understand clearly. You are and I am. These feelings are the products of this gross earth. Out of the earth comes vegetation and the essence of I amness. That I amness disappears. When the body drops off, 
because essentially it is only a product of the food essence. September 6, 1979. You come here with your concept, I am like this, so I have to start demolishing it to throw it overboard. The Absolute does not know itself, but the Absolute is offered an opportunity to understand itself through this food product, the I Am. Before I came here, I expected to be full of love, but I feel weak and tired. This is because of the demolition process. To start with, you must be completely dismantled and rebuilt. Before the seed is planted, the ground must be cultivated and fertilized. Only after plowing the ground and planting the seed will the sprouting take place. The demolishing process is necessary. What remains is only consciousness, and then the sprouting takes place. Whenever foreigners come here, they raise the question of love. I amness is love only. You have assumed this shape, the flower of I amness, out of love only. The very core of all atoms is permeated by the knowledge I am. Embrace all the atoms of the universe with the feeling that all of them have come inside us in the form of the knowledge I am. You are listening to this knowledge of something which cannot be experienced by the body-mind consciousness in words through your body-mind consciousness. Whenever you speak, you first identify yourself with something, but that I is not going to last. It is not honest. It will not be eternal. Whatever I am telling you will be absorbed only by those who have the ground already prepared for it. Even those who think they have understood have not understood, as I mean for them to understand. Yesterday I couldn't sleep. When I was lying on my bed, I kept hearing sounds and seeing lights. I was scared, sweating. I thought I was dying. Whatever is happening is happening as it should. Even if whatever you felt was dying, actually was dying, you were not dead. Keep that in mind. What sort of love is advocated in your religion? Love thy neighbor. Your religion advocates that you love every being out of the love for God. Christ said to love your neighbor as yourself. How do you put that into practice? By sometimes coming here. That love is here. The love is in the most purified form when there is no difference between the lover and the beloved. In all this world of yours, what is the cause of the most suffering? Duality. When did this duality start? With the first perception of something other than myself. The beginning of duality is when you know you are. This is the primary duality, the very source of illusion. Don't just listen to me meekly. Ask questions. What knowledge would you like to acquire? Of sin and merit. That by which you feel happy and satisfied is merit, and that by which you are disturbed or dissatisfied is sin. If a man commits a sin and does not feel sorry for it, is it still a sin? Don't talk from the standpoint of a person, a human being, an illusion. When did you get to know about merit and sin? Only after you were given a concept. If you do something wrong, do you suffer immediately or in the next life? You may have to suffer immediately and definitely in your next birth. The beginning of suffering was with the memory that you are. Those who commit sins do not appear to be suffering. This is your concept, but inside there are traumatic experiences. How do we face our problems in daily life? According to your own identity with that self, carry out your duties. Look upon all as yourself. In the life of a lawyer, so many things happen every day. There is always trouble. You are speaking from the body-mind sense. Get out of that. And then do whatever I like. Then you will behave according to your own worthiness. So once you clearly understand the knowledge of the self, the difficulties disappear. Then everything goes on automatically. True. Then why do you ask questions? Are there no activities in that state? Then you will know that not a leaf moves without you. Because of you, all activities take place. There is talk of equanimity and tranquility, but it seems to me that with suffering there is more of an urge to realize. 
Kunti, the mother of Pandavas, asked Krishna for suffering so that she could remember him. Can I have your comments? How long have you been here? That is meant for the ignorant. If you find your own identity, such questions will not arise. Such ideas are given to instill courage in the ignorant. Not for you. The next question would be, who was the priest who performed the marriage of Rama and Siddha? If self-knowledge is the proper approach, where is the place for devotion? They are not different. Bhakti and Yana. This is realized only when you realize your own self. Because I amness is there, you have devotion to God. The process of loving the self by the self is taken up by devotion to Rama, Krishna, Christ, etc. And its fruition is when the self realizes the self. Then you know that everything is the self only. Is it any help to pray that the soul rest in peace? It is only a concept. For a dead person, is there a soul left so that he is going into peace? Out of love for the dead person, you take a bowl of milk and offer it to the dead soul. Is he going to come and drink it? It is only to give you satisfaction. Why inquire about what occurs after death? What are you today? This illusion always keeps you away from your own self. You are always inquiring about everything outside, but you do not try to find out what you are. All during your life you have held different identities for yourself. After your birth you perceived that you were a child, then a teenager, an adult, middle-aged and old. None of these identities has remained with you. Whatever you hold on to as myself will disappear. This is to be understood. A Satguru must guide you. He only is the Satguru who has fully understood. You have to understand the contradiction clearly. Whatever I am expounding, I am driving at something. If you say that you have understood, it has not clicked. You must come to a state of I have not understood anything. You must go beyond this understanding stage, come to a stage beyond. You must come to this conclusion. The various stages from childhood up to old age, whatever you have understood and got stabilized in as your identity has proved false. September 7th, 1979 What are we to do today? Witness that consciousness, that mischievous elusive consciousness because of which you observe various stages. It's very simple. This consciousness was not there earlier, and it is going to disappear. Still, you will be there and witness that consciousness. You, the Absolute, are the perfect state. You are not the consciousness, nor are you in the consciousness, which is full of wants and needs. Another way of understanding Whatever knowledge I have acquired through bhajans, devotion, etc., is surrendered to the knowledge of God. But I am not that. I don't come with the perfume of that knowledge or consciousness. All is surrendered to the consciousness itself, and I am apart from it. I surrender all my knowledge, including myself and consciousness, to that manifest consciousness, Brahma. Creation itself is Brahma. The sacrificial fire is also Brahma, and the sacrificer is Brahma. The only thing I understand is that we are the reality, not the body-mind. I am always thinking of that. Tell me about your knowledge of this. It is very difficult. That is all there is, and we are always that. You make it very difficult to describe because you cannot give it a name or form. What is it of which you cannot give a description? I just feel the presence of that I amness, that existence. I cannot describe it. You cannot see that knowingness, but that sees everything else. That consciousness is the same in everything and everywhere. Having once realized this with conviction, can you make use of it? No, no use can be made of it. Whatever happens in the world, will it have the same attraction for you? No. I used to be concerned with whatever was happening, but it does not concern me now. Things are happening in the world just as they used to happen, but one has realized that one has no name or form. 
and therefore no activities. Whatever is happening in the world is in the nature of a dream. The individual personality is lost. One who knows this cannot be interested in improving such a world. He does not concern himself with the behavior in the world. A person may have the brightest intellect in the world and with the aid of that intellect collect the maximum information about the world. But all that will be useless because the basis is false. After listening to the significance of these words, have you reached your original state? You. No. That is because of your identity with and pride in your body-mind. Why do we see a world? Why do we see wrongly? When you ask this question, are you not aware of yourself? Don't you have an identity with your body? Yes, I have. Give up this idea. How can I? There is really nothing to give up. You have a name, you think you are that name, but you are not. What is the function of the name, my body, my personality? You don't have a personality, it's all in the mind. I do have a mind and my mind tells me that I have a personality. What can I do? It's not the mind, it's the vital breath that makes you feel you are a separate entity. Vital force gives rise to thoughts. Otherwise, there is no mind. The breath gives rise to the thoughts in the world and you are only watching it. So long as you identify with the body-mind, this subject is far beyond your understanding. You must go beyond the mind. I don't want to go beyond. Come here only if you are prepared to listen without the body-mind identity. Otherwise, you are wasting your time. Don't come here unless you are prepared to give up this identity. But I keep on finding myself here. All right, do come here, but keep on pondering about this, that you are not the body. I think about it all the time, but my thinking does not take me further. Keep thinking and discriminating. When the body dies, you do not die. It must be a part of myself which I have never known. I just know my body, my name, my personality. That's all I know. You keep on thinking about it and listening. Read about it. Study about it. September 8, 1979 I don't know what I am. I only know I am in pain. That much I know. These are the opposites of pain and pleasure. This is slightly different from ordinary pain. Some liking of yours has been contaminated. Therefore you experience that feeling. How did Maharaj know this? That cannot be explained. I cannot say how I woke up or went to sleep. Can you help me in my pain? Forget the body consciousness. You need not be after pleasure. Whatever you call the pleasure is not the ultimate. I am not after pleasure or happiness, but this thing which is troubling me should go. It is not there. It is only your imagination. Your concept that you have pain. There is nothing purer than you are. That pain is only your imagination, an illusion, a concept. I ought to throw away that concept. What is there to throw away? That you were born? How did you get that concept? I should ignore it? Only know, only observe, be the witness. Nothing else is to be done. Don't attempt anything. Only know what you are. So I have no salvation. I must witness all this trouble. Yes, you are to look straight at the face of it, the origin of it, the whole of it, and find out from where it is. Look at that center from where this knowledge has appeared on you. Concentrate on that only. When you reach that core, you will find rays of light emanating from it. Whatever you see is only the play of light. Merge into that center. Be one with it. What will happen to the universe all around me that I have rejected? You are the center, and when you turn inside, you will find that all the universe you see is only through that. I see that Maharaj has regulated his own life. Why does he not tell us what we should do from morning to night? Give no attention to what you should do from morning to night. Just pay no attention to this. You are not the body-mind. Then how is it that Maharaj has regulated his life? I am beyond time and life. The life of the universe depends on me. I don't depend on the universe. Maybe so, but what we see is a well-regulated life. 
I am untouched by the five elements. Apparently, it seems that I might be rolling in actions, but there is no action for me. Once you get a glimpse of your true state, you must stabilize there for eternity. My mother told me that I am a boy. She never asked me to memorize it to repeat I am a boy. She told me only once, and I remembered it. You need not repeat I am not the body. Once you understand it, it is finished. You must be as firmly convinced that you are not the body as you are sure that you are not going to deliver a baby because you are a male. You will never entertain the idea at any time that you are going to deliver a child. What should I meditate on? Meditate on the fact that you are, on your beingness. Why do you call this I amness the food essence? This I amness is only a signboard indicative of the absolute. But the signboard is not you. The body is a Tao made out of the raw material of this manifest universe. It is continuously changing and evaporating into the manifest universe. When this gets exhausted, it only transforms itself into space. When this body is completely transformed into space, there is no intellect. That intellect is there only with the body. Out of the space it gets formed again. In the process of that formation, there is no intelligence. Is there no such thing as time? Your I amness defines the time. It is only an idea. And you, have you brought any questions? Last year I came to India to find a guru who could lead me to realization. I came with the idea of finding a form who would give me detailed instructions step by step. When I met Maharaj, instead of finding a guru with a form, all I walked away with was an empty frame or a mirror. I found I didn't have any form, anything, just pure space that changes all the time. When I think of Maharaj, sometimes I see him as myself. Sometimes I see him as nothing. The person that I see in front of me changes all the time. There is nothing I can point at and say, that is he. It is frightening and the fear has been growing. What you have said is quite appropriate, quite correct. Whatever you observe is nothing else but yourself only. Get rid of the body image as yourself. Whatever you have seen is yourself. Often the concepts, the ideas that are in the books or that are discussed here come to my mind, or his image comes to my mind. Immediately after, not before, the feeling comes that there is nothing there, that what I am hearing is not what it is. But it's only after thinking of him that I feel this space. Who realizes that nothing is, that everything is gone? And when everything is gone, what remains? That's what is frightening. When everything goes, you are the real. As a concept, I understand that. For a second I realize and then I go back to the unreal. I attach myself to my family, my wife, my children. It's a habit. I go back. You are so used to the support of concepts that when your concepts leave you, although it is your true state, you get frightened and try to cling to them again. That is the meeting point of that imminent principle and the eternal, the borderland. Why is the intellect puzzled then? That beingness which you are experiencing is melting away. When that concept of I am goes, intellect also goes. So the intellect gets that frightening experience of I am going. How to overcome the fright? Just watch that moment. One who feels I am dying is not a yanni. Your true state is beyond the primary concept of I am. Consciousness is the primary concept. But this I amness or consciousness is the product of the food body. You, the absolute, are not that. Death comes to the quality of I amness, which is a product of the food. But the Absolute prevails always. This is the ultimate knowledge. This knowledge was expounded by Lord Krishna to Arjuna on the battlefield, the horses poised on the point of battle. He never advocated to Arjuna that he should shave his head or go into the forest and perform tapas. Nothing of the sort. Once you understand this ultimate knowledge, then you do what you like. Lord Krishna said, With true dynamism you fight this battle. And I say, once you understand this, you carry out your worldly life with full enthusiasm, full of zest. 
but understand that your true identity is beyond this quality of I amness. For a yani, the moment of the so called death is the most blissful because he is going to the very source of bliss. Eternity is bliss, the very ocean of nectar, immortal. September 9, 1979 After you became conscious of your body and your beingness, you gathered impressions from your environment and observed the manifested world around you. After deliberating on the panorama of the world, of yourself in it, you must have come to some conclusion of your own. All your behavior is dependent on your identification with the body, which depends on the knowledge I am. The I am depends upon the food essence sustaining your body. This is your capital for going about in the world. This consciousness of beingness which you are now experiencing is dependent on the essence of the food you eat. When you can no longer assimilate that food, your vital breath becomes weaker and will one day go along with the consciousness that you are. You will solve this puzzle if you are eager to deliberate on it. There was absolutely no experience of yourself or the world before you experienced body or the food. This manifestation is beginningless. First was born the sky. Out of the sky came the air. Out of the air, the light and heat. Out of that heat, the water, and out of the water, whatever was, became the earth from which the whole of life sprouted. These elements together are responsible for this great manifestation. Consciousness is the quality of the essence of the food that is in all the elements together. Then the different qualities of the food should produce different qualities of that consciousness. The five elements differ from each other. Guna is different from each form. When that consciousness is limited to the body, it seems to be different. But when it knows itself, it will merge into the universal consciousness, which is all-embracing. How is the illusion born? How is the shade of a substance born? It comes out of all the substances that make up the body. This maya is nothing but love for that beingness. We are not able to step out of that trap. You stick to what you are in the beginning without embellishments or attachments. It is an imaginary trap that you are caught in. What do we do to get this experience? Don't do anything. Just be in your I amness and do not give it the shape of your body. Why should we hold on to the I amness? You must know the consciousness of your beingness. By doing that, you will be like the man who has caught Brahma in the hand. As a fisherman catches the fish in his net, so you will be after knowing your beingness. The mind ego always makes it difficult to know myself. Mind does not exist without your consciousness. It is all a matter of words. Vital breath has given birth to mind. Why do we have to hold on to this I am if we already know that we are beyond it? I am is only a concept. When did it occur to you that I am is only a concept? I became aware that everything is concepts and that I don't have to live with concepts. There is no question of being with this or that, just be. We hear that we are to live as what we are already. While we are here in this room, it is very easy to cast off what we are not. But how are we to live outside in a world that does not really exist? You will come to realize that you do nothing. Everything happens and you will come to know that you are only the observer of what happens. Just be. Where is the world for those who have realized? The world is in that beingness. I do not have to do anything? What have you done so far? So far, our relationship is of have to and be. Is it to be first and then have to? That will look after itself. I only show you the state of affairs. What you do after that is your own business. In one way, you will understand that the whole supply of everything is through yourself. And in another way, you will have lost everything. September 10th, 1979 Why is Maharaj asking us to condemn the gross form? I do not. Everything, the dirt, the body, is myself. But the process of transformation is continually going on. That gross form is again transformed into space. The cycle goes on. Why should we worry about accelerating the cycle? Who is accelerating? 
We're all doing it. Since your recognition of yourself is from your toes to the crest of your head, who has asked you to take the worry? There are two things, the world and my pain. This is the seat of your body identification. I should ignore everything around me? When you reach that particular level of understanding and assimilating, you will experience it and enjoy it. But once you transcend it, you will evacuate it like fecal matter. I have become Brahma Deva, having understood the quality of Brahma Deva. But if there is something better than the Brahma Deva quality, I will attain it, rejecting this, etc. These are the landmarks or levels of different worthiness. For me, there is no question of any movement. I am also dynamic in the non exhaustible itself. Although the flow is there, I cannot exhaust it. Everything in the world merges in me, settles down, and takes rest. No doubt, gurus are very important, very significant. But finally, they merge into space. Whatever you embrace and cling to is to go. Give up everything and understand what you are. I have a question. Yesterday, Maharaj said that if a person wants to realize what he is, he should just embrace the consciousness. Is that similar or equal to the relationship between a disciple and a guru? When you become one with that knowledge, you will realize that the knowledge I am is the very guru of the universe. Well, I ask because I feel love and respect for Maharaj. And I feel that he responds, too, in a very simple, uncluttered manner. I have needed him to help me start embracing the I consciousness. I have needed his wisdom. My feeling for him has grown. I need to understand the relationship between the guru and the disciple. Whatever is to be known is contained in that very thing itself. What has been said is correct. Since I was here before, his image, everything he said, is coming all the time. But I also remember that he said that I must be free of concepts, even that of a guru. What you say is very good. The guru is the manifestation of the knowledge which you will also be in course of time. I accept what you are saying. Should I act or just let things come and go? There is nothing to be done. Let it flow. Just watch. Do nothing about it. The sun is shining. The rays go where they go. There is a dowel made of sugar. That Tao is sugar only. Similarly, when you see the image of a guru, it represents knowledge only, your consciousness. The image may be of the guru, Lord Krishna, Christ, etc. It is the manifestation of the knowledge which you are. In this process, knowledge of all types, concepts of all types, cosmic as well as personal, come to my mind unbidden. When they flow, they seem to touch people. Relationships change. Things happen in the world and I don't know exactly how to cope with them. Acting as a personality, an illusion would not be correct. Whatever actions happen through you without your involvement as a personality are the appropriate spontaneous actions. In my traveling and searching in the past, I have come across different kinds of gurus, one who teaches mantra yoga, kundalini yoga, etc. What is the underlying reality? Must the seeker know about the kundalini awakening or the chakras? When you stabilize in the knowledge of your beingness, all other knowledge becomes available to you. Wherever I go, this kundalini knowledge seems to follow me. I want to know whether I should throw it out or look at it. Throw it out, but hang on to your being, your own self. Don't accept anything except your being. Just be. The only pure knowledge is of the self. I found the Gayatri mantra in a book. I have a certain fondness for it and a certain use. Don't make use of anything except the knowledge I am. Forget everything else. Consider a magnificent tree with many branches and leaves. Go to the root and not to the branches. Why have gurus always had a certain kind of initiation with disciples? That is their nature. After marriage, the children multiply. That is the nature of wedded love. The guru-disciple initiation is a natural process. Is there initiation here? Oh, yes. You are given a certain sentence, and you are asked to be alert, and to remain is the meaning of those sacred words. What must one be or do to reach that position? Only have the firm conviction that the meaning of the sacred sentence is yourself. 
You must be alert. Your attention must be present. Is it wrong to ask to be initiated? There is no question of wrong. If you want it, it will be granted. As a matter of fact, that is the formal initiation, but all this talk is the process of initiation only. I am aware of that, but I would like the formal initiation. It will be granted, but with this you are given something more than formal initiation. September 11, 1979 Man takes upon himself all these concepts of sin and merit. He binds himself with all sorts of concepts. The consciousness takes an infinite manifestation of forms according to the concepts of the individual. What I am trying to do is to correct that concept idea. What is the cause of the next birth? Once this beingness, the I know, has been extinguished and merged into the universal consciousness, what do you point to as the seed of the next birth? Isn't it desire which causes rebirth? Haven't those desires and passions been assimilated into what is called the atmosphere, and has it not been universal in that sense? Where is the individuality? Where is the seed for rebirth? If you look at what matter is, it is solidified water. So when you talk of rebirth, what is it that is going to take rebirth? See this metal? Is it water? You will not call it water, though it came out of water ultimately. So if you want to find out about yourself, discriminate properly. Find out exactly what you are. Why worry about the next birth? Find out what you are now. Leave out all irrelevance. All these creations are taking place out of that principle which is subtler than space. That ancient principle itself takes birth in various forms. These are the incarnations. There are no other reincarnations. You come here wanting some kind of palatable knowledge. I am not going to deliver it. I am going to place factual knowledge before you. Right from childhood you have attained various stages and all of them are gone. Whatever you have attained will go. So what are you going to hold on to as yourself? If you want to be what you are, it is free and plentiful and available without any difficulty. But if you want to be something other than what you are, it is difficult. But we read and hear of rebirth. Have you experienced death and rebirth? Those are the ideas of others. Find out for yourself what you are. You should not accept the answers from other people. You can think for yourself, ponder it, find out what you are. Presently you are the manifest knowledge. When you try to imbibe that, that itself will give you all the knowledge. But you must dwell there only. What does I am connote? It means there are three states, waking, dream, and deep sleep. I am means you are these three states. When these are gone, the memory is also gone, so where is the question of reincarnation? When the body is dead, it decomposes. Many worms are formed. They are formed because the essence of the elements is present and out of it life emerges. How is the life indicated? Everything, the whole cosmos, is full of this life force that is expressed through the food body. Therefore, the I am. The life force of insects, animals, etc. is already present. Only the expression is attained through this objective food body. The appearance of this primary concept, I am, is the beginning of duality. I started counting with myself. Before this counting starts that has no number, that is the absolute. With that little movement, I am. This counting started. I understand completely, intellectually, but how can I realize it? Who understands the intelligence and with what? Our need is to enter into that fully conscious state. We call it superconsciousness. Can we enter into that superconsciousness consciously? Or must the consciousness be tied down to enter it? I drop into sleep spontaneously. I have not studied the art of sleeping. Similarly, this consciousness subsides into no consciousness. Are we to make efforts? Is this art of entering superconsciousness by grace? Did you put in any effort to get this body shape? It came automatically, spontaneously. This is also spontaneous. But you want to make effort to employ some special skills to go into that absolute state, to be. 
what is right meditation? The right meditation is when you contemplate yourself. There should be no concepts or images while you are contemplating. Brahman is without concepts. I try to allow my mind to wander and slowly it comes to steadiness for a second. I can sometimes witness the thoughts, but I am not reaching the I am. What you must witness is not your thoughts, but the consciousness I am. Everything is an expression of the I am, but you are not that. You are prior to the I am. I am this means all this chaotic worldly state, so when am I in a position to just observe the I amness? Follow Arjuna. Could there be more chaotic conditions than a battlefield? Right in the midst of the battlefield, Arjuna attained ultimate understanding. We have to observe the chaotic condition without naming it chaotic. Just bear with it quietly, within and without. Can we go beyond chaos and bring the new order within ourselves, without our knowledge? Yes, when you are apart from consciousness, it is peace only. Whatever you try to design out of your concept or intellect is useless. The eternal has no fragrance of I am about itself. It does not know it is. I want a little help of the communion type to be spiritually influenced just for expediting the process of concentration within me. It is already happening, otherwise you would leave. Why are people coming here, spending a lot of money, traveling many miles? Why do they sit here? Is there any attraction of beauty here? People come here when the Absolute is opening up. It is opening up unknowingly. What happens knowingly will not last. It is unknowingly, spontaneously opening up and you will not understand that. Whatever you understand is not going to remain. As a child, did you know that you were taking a shape or design and that later you would undergo all these stages? Everything happens spontaneously. What does seeing purple light in meditation mean? These are images created out of your illumination. That light might take the form of Lord Krishna, Christ, Rama, etc. But it is self-light, your creation. It has no particular purpose. You are seeing your own light. All scriptures are sung in praise of that principle, but you, the Absolute, are not that principle. No doubt that is a very significant step. That principle is great, but I, the Absolute, am not that. September 14, 1979 In the process of meditation, when one reaches the silence and asks, Who am I? There comes a profounder silence where the notion I does not arise. Is this a state, and if so, can one have flashes of it prior to self-realization? These experiences are in the realm of your birth state. The state that I am referring to is the state where birth is forgotten, as are the name and form. What you have described of samadhi or meditation is correct, but it is still the product of the body-mind imagination. Whatever experiences you have in meditation, of that silence also, is confined to the realm of consciousness. Consciousness is born and it will go. You are prior to it. It is also said that the self is self-effulgent, that it is light, and that the consciousness appears by reflection of that light. If one were to pursue the light, could one find the state to which Maharaj is alluding? Whatever is manifest before you has come out of that consciousness. I was talking about the self-effulgent light which equates itself with the self. If one is a seeker of truth, by finding that light would one find the truth. There is the true awareness from which comes consciousness, which is your feeling, I am. Be one with your consciousness, and that is all that you can do. The ultimate state must come to you. You can only watch whatever happens. There is nothing you can do to get it. Is there in Maharaja's awareness a self-effulgent light that does not constrict his awareness but is part and parcel of it? Translator, he has confirmed that earlier. Those are only names. You can call it true awareness, the ultimate state, or the effulgent light. The meaning is the same. It is not literal. 
Many of the religious texts of Advaita Vedanta express the notion that as one becomes self-aware, there is a light which permeates, and that the light which the world or Maya has is a reflection of that primordial light. Is that not literal? Maya is the expression of that one which cannot be described. Consciousness is manifesting itself through all this, and you are before the consciousness. The consciousness is the soul of this manifest world, and you, the Absolute, are the soul of the consciousness. Whatever you may have read is only concepts of the writers. Does it tally with your personal knowledge? No, these are the guidelines toward achieving the sense of the I am. They also say that all gurus are one. Guru is the same all-pervading consciousness I am. The Satguru has gone beyond all these concepts, including the primary concept I am. Can this going beyond be done on a step-by-step -step basis, or does it happen immediately? You say a child is born when the body arrives. Didn't it take nine months to develop that body? If you consider the nine months, it is step by step. But the birth itself is sudden. All right, there is a gestation period. Is that analogically correct with the facts? I have an analogy that even the nine months is not correct. You are before the gestation period. The whole thing is Maya. Nobody is born and nobody dies. It is a distortion. That is true, but some of us are more distorted than others. The question is how to become less distorted. Back again to the original position, nothing is to be done. Be in your beingness and everything that is to happen will happen. You must have a deep yearning to attain the truth. You must have the intense need to understand. To such a person, the guru arrives and breaks the shell. Yes, but there is another injunction that one should remain desireless. The yearning is also a desire. At that moment, it is a necessity. To become desireless is the last desire, and it must exist. How should this yearning manifest itself? Do you have to be told that you are awake? Sometimes, yes. You know it. Well, sometimes the sadaka has to be hit on the head. I agree. Your beingness is something to which you are entitled. That is your primary capital in life, and that will do whatever is to be done. That state which was yours before you were born, and which is yours after the body dies, is your permanent property. Your I amness is consumed in that ultimate capital of yours. I have a question. Why do I feel sad when I see that my parents and the guru are only concepts? I have so much love, and to see them as concepts brings a feeling of pain. There is no other concept except that I am born. At the root of all parents and gurus is that primordial illusion. Things that are ugly go easily, but not so the things that one loves. That brings pain. These are the pangs of things which should not have been done and are done, and which should have been done and were not done. Hence these pains. That attachment should not be body-bound. Overcome that sense of body identification. Love for the guru is without the feeling of duality. There are so few self-realized beings and so many sadakas wishing to become realized. Why are there so few who have achieved success? Everything is spontaneous. This manifestation has no cause. Therefore, nothing can be pointed out as a cause for your question as to why few become siddhas. This question cannot be answered. You try to be that love which is not conditioned by the body-mind. If you are that love, it is total, complete love. But if it arises out of your body-mind, that is the root cause of your misery. Detachment comes only after you are free from bodily love. Be free from the body-mind state and be in the state of love, and that will be the source of all bliss. Sometimes I believe there is a communion, the highest communion with the Satguru in the silence. It is a good taste, but it is personal. Perhaps it might be personal until one becomes absorbed by what one adores. Then it may become impersonal. Did you see us worship this morning? Yes, I did. 
There is no darkness. There is no daylight. There is no deep sleep. There is no waking state, no hunger, no thirst. That is the state. But all this is my expression. You feel that you are in that, but I feel that I am not in that. I worship, I do bhajans, but I am not in that. My true state is beyond that. I felt like the self was worshipping the self. Whatever you call it is all right, but it is still a concept. Any concept you utter frames your future. Therefore, don't have any concepts. You are already the ultimate. Don't try to be something. What does one do about the practical side of this relative existence? That is, the working, the achieving, the goal-oriented society that we live in, the families that we have, what is to be done about them? This world expression is out of the life elemental consciousness, whose responsibility it is to take care of this manifest world. The world is the expression of your consciousness. But you are not the consciousness. Understand this principle and carry out your life as you like.